There are so many new features in DaVinci Resolve 20, and some of the little things, they're not getting the love they need. They're gonna get it overshadowed. So in this video, I'd like to quickly power through some of the small changes that are gonna make the biggest difference editing in DaVinci Resolve 20. Convert to multicam from a timeline that has the source audio channels. So what that means is you can do all your synchronization on any old timeline and still get access to the original source audio channels without doing any flattening or or messing around with an adaptive audio track. The way this works after you have everything on your timeline all synced up, this is a four hour documentary style shoot. You just right click on the timeline. It's a one way street thing. You say, convert timeline to multicam clip and here's our new option, use source audio channels. Click it, it's gonna make a multicam clip that you can edit with and get direct access to each microphone. So I've clicked it, I got a multicam clip, I'm gonna drag it to a new timeline and you can see I've got an Ashley microphone, a Braxton microphone. And if we wanna see the different camera angles, just click this button right here to change this to multicam and you're off to the races. It goes black in all the moments when it wasn't filming, but give it a second, it'll draw waveforms for you. And you can always change them afterwards too, really easily. There goes the waveforms by command or control right clicking. And then you can see I can change, if I wanna change that microphone to Braxton for whatever reason, you can see it's really easy with a command right click to change those. Getting access to native source audio channels is a completely new way of working directly from a timeline. Transcriptions now export with speaker information and the time code. So make sure you transcribe with speaker information. Right click over here, make sure that is enabled to do the speaker detection on a clip. Click the button, it'll do the automatic AI based transcription for you. You can come in here and edit speakers at any time, but the big thing is this export button, hit that, we'll export Temple1C as a text file, open this up in text edit. And you'll see this is an easy way you can pass this off. You could load it in someone's Google Docs and they can come through here and give you time code information of where that exists on the original clip. DaVinci Resolve 20 has three tiny edit page viewer changes that are probably gonna go unnoticed unless I show you right now. One of them is huge for me because I do a lot of conforming and a lot of times you take an image and maybe it gets scaled down at some point just to like a tiny, tiny bit and I can't really see that there's like a black piece of, uh, basically we, we don't have pixels going to the edge. Well, if you go to the new uh, timeline options menu for the viewer background set to alert red, now we can see those red pixels along the edge. I hit Z to fit, and now we can easily know to go in there and fix that. I could double click this to go to a frame or just you know scale it up however you need to. The other thing that's really cool that's new in here is it used to always zoom with your mouse to the very center, and then you would have to pan it around. Now if I need to make and in inspect something, maybe I need to inspect the word New York or something over here, I place my cursor over the thing I want to zoom into, just like it's always been in the Fusion page scroll right in and it goes right to that one point. I don't have to worry about panning over to it later because it zoomed into the center. Z to fit again. And then the last little thing about the edit page viewer is our drop down here to change timelines. I can see every timeline in the project as far as I know. It's not just limited to like the last 10 that you had opened. Custom grid bin view in DaVinci Resolve 20. So this allows us to freely place our thumbnails anywhere in the bin so that we can sort of storyboard stuff out before we put it into a cut. Now, I'm gonna open this subclip spin to give me more space. You can do this for a long time in here, but if you didn't know it's open as the new window, it's a big floating bin. I'm gonna close the side panel here to give me a little bit more room to work. Expand it out, and then it's over here in the top right is what you wanna look for. This drop down will say custom now, and then one more thing I wanna do is say, change this to uh, make sure your snap to grid is also off, which it is for me. You can see I've sort of pre-done this where I've got um, my scene two, is on a different row. My scene one is up on its own row. Um, if you edit it in Avid, I'm sure you've done this in the past, but just know it's a thing. It's really nice to have options. Remote monitoring got a nice update. If you have a newer Macintosh, you can stream at a higher quality output. So if you've never done it before, it's live streaming your timeline out to someone else anywhere else in the world. Maybe even to yourself if you're remoting into a computer. So if you've never used it, it's under the workspace menu. Turn on remote monitoring. I believe it's a studio feature. And then you should see video codec. I've got an M2 Max computer, H.265, 422, 10-bit. Choose it, start session. It's as simple as copying that code, giving it to whoever else needs to see it. And then they open it in, in, a, in an iPhone app called Remote Monitoring or a computer that has like a 3G calibrated Ultra Studio card. There's a new app for it to receive the signal as well. As well as one other really cool feature, if you actually remote into another machine and you receive the signal back to your location, you can see your power windows now. You can see your overlays. 
And the way you access that, click a power window. I'll just do that so I have something on screen to show. Under the three dot options menu, we can say show viewer overlays on remote monitor. Now you'll be able to see that back at your, through the, uh, the remote monitoring string. You'll see the power window. Auto Resync Bins now works with still images like JPEGs as well as video files. And what Auto Resync from Bins actually means, it means that DaVinci Resolve can import footage for you after you've first linked it to a folder on your hard drive. Let me show you how it works. So if I grab this graphics folder, it has three images in it. Make sure you drag it to the left side of your project. And then once you do that, right click on it and say automatically resync media files. Now, because that is checked, you can see automatic resync media files is checked. Now, if I get any new JPEG and put it on that folder on my hard drive, on my server, it's going to automatically import into DaVinci Resolve. So for instance, let's say I want to grab this picture right here, picture 21, command C, command V, paste it into graphics. I can come back over here in DaVinci Resolve, continue working, and in the background, it's going to import that image for me into that bin. And there it just went. So you can see it imported it without me actually having to bring it in myself. The media out node here in DaVinci Resolve 20 got a nice little upgrade. So you can see what your footage will look like later when it's uh, color graded or even comped into the, uh, the edit timeline. All you gotta do, click media out, click the color button, and that's gonna give you a preview of what it will look like downstream with the color grade applied. Or the mix button over here, that's going to basically show you all the output of the edit page once you've combined things like this was a text layer that was added as a new layer on the edit page. Um, just a nice way to, to be able to sort of see what things will look like after everything's more integrated. DaVinci Resolve 20 has some nice preference improvements as well. And one of those is to import everything as mono channels, like including video clips, like my FX30, FX3. Maybe I plug a mic into just one of the channels. I want it to just be mono when it comes in. I don't want to change it afterwards. Where that's located, if you go to DaVinci Resolve Preferences, User, Editing, there's a checkbox now for Configure Clips as Multi Mono on Import. So as soon as you set that up, you drag your clip into here. You load it up, now you'll see, even though it's two channels, normally it would think it was stereo, it's set to mono. And so I can work with that right away. I don't have to go configure stuff uh, and change it to mono afterwards. Also in your user preferences for DaVinci Resolve 20, we have a new tab here for cache management with a checkbox that's gonna allow us to automatically delete old cache files after a certain period of time which is great to free up hard drive space for projects you're not working on anymore. As a Fusion artist, a new project setting is something I'm really a fan of. If you go over here, you'll see Fusion tab. We can set our default start frame now to whatever we want. I'm setting it to 1001, that's the standard. And the reason this is so great is our Fusion comps, when we click to go into Fusion, we're not dependent on a specific frame number that's based off of duration of media in. We can lock our keyframes onto a consistent frame regardless of how long the footage is. In fact, we don't have to worry about negative frames because we've got some lead way there to go backwards in time if we need to add it and make it longer. DaVinci Resolve 20 now supports ACES 2.0, which is great for me because if I choose my output transform and I'm always working in 709, it's the very first thing in the list. I don't have to go find it. Of course, it supports a lot of other stuff too, but that's a nice addition. DaVinci Resolve 20 does change a few things about where you choose folders to store stuff that's created in Resolve, like the voiceover files. It used to be that you went to the Capture and Playback tab and chose that location here. Now they've tidied things up. It's actually all in the master project settings. If you scroll down and you'll see an area that is for working folders, and then you'll see project media location. That's the directory. That's the folder on a disk that it's going to create the file at. It's going to actually ask you this the first time you create a new project. So pick a location that you know you'll be able to get to later on. One more user interface change to DaVinci Resolve 20 is they've sort of tidied up a lot of these drop down menus. So we've got new categories we've never seen before. The video tab has selection follows playhead. That's one I'm always turning on and off. But just remember, if you're ever not sure where a new menu item is, you can always come over to the help menu area and type the thing you're looking for. So if I needed to find where selection follows playhead is, and then I move down, it's gonna take me to that point on the screen so I can learn this new location because I can't remember all of those shortcuts. Hey, welcome if you're new to Creative Video Tips. I'm Chadwick, I'm a commercial finishing artist and DaVinci Resolve master trainer based here in New York. I am so thankful for you and your creativity and your time. I have some other DaVinci Resolve 20 launch videos that you might enjoy since you watched till now. And because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in the next video.